evening, everybody. I, uh, how's it going so far? Things going all right? It's good to see your colleagues. Good to be together. Yep. Fantastic. Yep. Fantastic. Yep. Um, uh, this is, I forget how many, I think this is my 23rd clergy conference in the Diocese of Atlanta. 22nd, 23rd, I have to sit down and count. Um, majority of it lived there uh, with you, um, and I think I'm heading into year 12 now. Uh, uh, in this in this job, and uh, and so uh, our rhythm in the Diocese of Atlanta, by and large, has been to invite people in uh, to be you know speakers, etc., to be to help us to think about our work together, to think about those sorts of things. They shared their gifts with us, and it just occurred to me after passing the decade mark. I'll just turn it off. Don't worry about it. Okay. It just occurred to me after uh, uh, passing the decade mark, can you turn it up a little bit, that, uh, that it wouldn't be a bad idea to, just to be here with you, um, uh, just as, as us, just uh, our fellowship together. That was the input I got from some of the deans and others of you to be together uh, as bishop and clergy and for us to talk a little bit about our work together uh, in, uh, in the diocese, for you to hear a little bit from me for me to hear a little bit from you uh, as we chart our course uh, together uh, for serving the Lord in middle and North Georgia. So this will be uh, the clergy conference uh, of all of those years where I've actually talked the most. I have four, don't, don't be afraid, I've got <laughs> uh, four brief meditations. <laughs> four brief meditations, only four brief meditations. Uh, uh, much shorter than my average sermon. Some of you will be relieved, all right. So George says yay. Um, and uh, just, I really just, the only ask is, is that you sit with some of the ideas. I'm not selling anything. Um, I, I think a lot about our work together, uh, as I'll make the case here. Uh, the privilege of the Episcopate is uh, oversight. And so to be able to work with all of you in some capacity over the years, you know, and listen to you and learn from you, you know, things accrue. And so I want to share some of that and provide maybe some images that might be helpful for our work together. Uh, so as Walter Brueggemann is famous for saying, whenever he does some keynotes, I'll talk a while, then you talk a while, then we'll go to the bathroom and we'll have a coffee or we'll do whatever. We're, that's just how, that's the rhythm. So I'll just jump right into it. Um, and uh, to my uh, Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters, my apologies uh, for my limits, uh, not being able to, to speak uh, uh, fluently in Spanish uh, enough to, to, to offer this to you, uh, it will be translated and sent out uh, in its totality. So you will, you will have that. So my apologies. Um, most of us have had a full day already, so there's no need for a long talk at this hour. Say amen. amen. <laughs> <laughs> However, I do want to use the next couple of minutes just to briefly frame up our time together for the next couple of days. Uh, how many people remember Martin Smith? And he, he was here with us. Martin Smith, SSJE. He's a former guest of this diocese and our uh, clergy conference. Uh, he wrote once, uh, in a, actually in an address to the House of Bishops in 1997 uh, at General Seminary, and that was included in your pre-work. Uh, he wrote that a diocese uh, and a bishop's relationship can be understood through the lens of the particular and the panoramic the particular and the panoramic. You as ministry heads, deacons and priests have each been called to the ministry of Jesus Christ in the particular. Your work is in a particular locale with particular people endeavoring to make progress on particular formation and missional goals. Have I got that right? I hope so. We can do this together now, come on. The ministry of the bishop is the ministry of panorama. Overview. The Greek word episkopoi, right, is simply oversight. That's all it is. That is why for more than 11 years, when I come to your particular location, I say, I greet you in the name of your brothers and sisters throughout Middle and North Georgia, situated in 75 and a half counties, 56,000 men, women, children, teenagers, and high school seniors. Incidentally, by the way, we have the kind of crack finance team that is always checking me for accuracy. 
And I found out and I confess to you and I ask your forgiveness that I have been leading you astray for 11 years. I have been saying, <laughs> this is going to be fun. I have been saying to you 117 worshiping communities. But Barbara, uh, were you part of this, Alicia? But Barbara uh, said, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to check him. We are 120 worshiping communities. So, so if, you, if you hear me change the number, don't think, okay, his, the cheese has slid off of his cracker now. He's, it's verified, can provide the data for you. Among the unique offerings of Bishop uh, in a diocese uh, is to keep, right, is to keep the particular aware of the panorama. Get it? And among the best gifts a specific ministry can give the bishop, right, are the insights that come from serving in your particular locale. Right? We would also add the deans in here as well. There is something more than ourselves at work here. The ministry of Panorama needs the ministry of the particular to function accurately, optimally, and wholly, W-H-O-L-L-Y, in our church's understanding. Likewise, the particular needs the benefit of the panoramic to function accurately, optimally, and wholly. News flash, we are not congregationalists. That's not who we are. It's just not who we are. We shouldn't behave that way because there is something more available to us than that. When we reread our ordination vows through this lens, we see that that is exactly how we promised to live when we made our vows to live an ordered life, godly, radical interdependence. That's what we promised. Godly, radical interdependence. After all, we remember that when God decided to be God, God chose to be relationship and to author all relationship. It is our heritage, vocation, and privilege as Anglicans slash Episcopalians to keep this counter-cultural way of life at the center of all we do. It's part of our witness to the world. We are called to be a Holy Spirit-empowered, popular culture-defying culture witness making an impact for God. What does that look like? These are some of the women we, we met in Nepal. I was with uh, Becca Stevens. She took me to meet these amazing women who were sort of doing death-defying work and finding a way to uh, make a dollar and find independence and make their way out of really tragic situations. And I thought about you and I thought about us and I thought about them and so I'm offering this image just as a guiding image. I wonder if we aren't like those spools on the ground, different sizes, different spots, different places. Notice all the thread goes up. The photographer was terrible, by the way. But the, 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 that was me. I'm not castigating anybody. <laughs> They're like, oh, he's throwing somebody under the bus. The threads go up, and then they come over into this piece here and from that piece they go to the wheel and they become much more useful than they are here. Just an image to think about how we live together. You have that second photograph there? It's just maybe it gives you a <laughs> this is not optimal. All right, go back to the other one. This is preferred, finding a way to work together to create something more useful than we can be by ourselves. That looks like multiple expressions of a cooperative whole strengthened by one another for the work set before us in Middle and North Georgia, and definitely not a barely affiliated gaggle of independent operators. We remember that the first word of our diocesan purpose statement is we. It's we. 
It's not me. It's not you. It's we. We. We challenge ourselves in the world to love like Jesus as we worship joyfully, serve compassionately, and grow spiritually. Thank you. And for those who remember the first year we rolled out that purpose statement, anybody in the room remember that? You ever, you ever see We Tested? I saw We Tested. There were competing, dueling resolutions, if you remember. It was just days after the presidential election. Remember that, Jeff? Hot dog. It was very contentious, and all the resolutions were very contentious. The long story short of all that was that after a torturous debate, people lining up at different microphones, articulating different versions of us and not we, and after more than an hour, I didn't even let y'all go to the bathroom. So we're not breaking the pee. Pee on your own. <laughs> right? We're going to stay in the room. We're going to figure out who we are. And if you remember the upshot of all that, what happened was we decided that we intend to be the we that the Book of Common Prayer described. That that was a superior way to go forward than these little cul-de-sacs of selective us's. That was a big day for us. It was very stressful for me being the chair of that meeting, but it was, a, it was a great day for us. We worked out who we say we are, and we doubled down on it in the face of very, a very stiff political headwind. I was very proud of us that day. For my part, having been given the privilege, privilege, of Panorama for the last 11 years and having taught or consulted in over 50 dioceses of this church. Here's what I observe. I observe that sharing and cooperation among ministries and congregations is among the most significant adaptive problem the church faces. Just sharing. Just sharing is an adaptive problem. We still struggle with what it means to be we. With that said, and in the interest of time, <laughs> let me add a friendly amendment to Martin Smith's framing. To the ministry of particular and panorama, I would add a third P. I'm a preacher. We need three. <laughs> All right? What's the third P? I'm glad you asked. Partnership. That's all. Just partnership. While the bishop is in relationship with the parishes, and the parishes are in relationship with the bishop and his staff, the way to better, listen to, listen to the deliverables here that come with partnership. Better problem solving, shared responsibility as it accrues to innovation, and new expressions of fidelity will come with increased relationship and partnership with one another. It's just the truth, y'all. It's 100% true. That said another way, the particular and panoramic all engaged in partnership with one another, specifically on the most pernicious problems we face, is the most effective technology we can employ to face our present challenges. I'm going to give you that again. Right? Basically, it is we. We is the best technology that we can muster to deal with the most pernicious problems that we're facing. We, this room, the insights, the experiences, the gifts, the wounds, all of it in this room is the best way that we can figure out how to go forward in middle of North Georgia. Best way. Best way. I'm convinced. This is how the writer of Hebrews articulates that same idea. I'm in the 13th chapter, 15, verses 15 and 16. The writer of Hebrews says this, Through him, that's Jesus, then let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that confess his name. He goes on, Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. That's the text we're going to work on for the next couple of days. Uh, anybody here uh, still love to do exegesis and work with Scripture, handle Scripture? 
And don't you love, or I hope you still love, the surprises that that yields. I can tell you, I've been digging down in this thing, and it's rich, those two verses. It's rich. It's rich. It's, it's, the, it's actually the centerpiece of all that I have to say to you in the next couple of days. The church has challenges, and so does the whole world. So does the atheist. But we have a way forward amidst our challenges because of our pioneer, his path, and his practices. Because of Jesus, we have coordinates about how to coordinate our response to our challenges, how to make progress on them, and how to bear witness to this world as we go about the work set before us in the particular. So, I know clergy a little bit. So let me say this. My final words to you this evening before we hand it over to Sister Sally. There's no charge here tonight. There's no sign-up sheet. Say amen. <laughs> I'm not going to constitute a committee. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Neither am I proposing a resolution for annual council. And for those who think this way, there is no implicit request for additional money for the diocesan budget. That's not the ask. I think I finally figured out what my job is. My job is this. I just am inviting you to wonder with Scripture to wonder with me and to wonder with your colleagues for a couple of days about what our common life could look like in middle and north Georgia if we decided anew, deeper, individually and collectively to distinguish ourselves in the praise of God, in offering ourselves to one another and by sharing what we have. That's the end of the first meditation.